Hey everyone, Sonathide here. Hope you all are doing great. Uh, it's been a long time. I've had quite a busy start to the year, but I'm glad to be back and I'm glad to be talking to you about skills and curious crafting in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak Title Update 5. So in this video, I'm going to be talking a lot about the new skills that they introduced in this update and the previous update, as well as a lot of the older skills that are now made more accessible by curious crafting. And I'm going to be talking about which ones you might want to use and which ones you might not want to use, and the sort of cases where you might want to use them. So yeah, uh, the skills I'll be talking about in this video are going to be the ones introduced for this patch, so Heaven Sent and Frenzy Bloodlust, and those introduced in the previous patch, Frostcraft and Dragon Conversion. I'm also going to be talking about some of the more related skills, so Bloodlust, Coalescence and Dragonheart, and then I'm going to talk about some of the older skills that are still really really good and now more accessible. So those are Wind Mantle, Powder Mantle, Build Up Boost and Mail of Hellfire. So yeah, first off, Heaven Sent. So Heaven Sent was a new skill they released in the Amatsu armor, and basically what that armor does is after enough time in combat, you'll get a few different effects. Uh, so eventually you have this gray aura around me, so you can still have to see it up here now, but the skill isn't activated yet. It only activates when you get the marker towards the side of the screen that says Heaven Sent is activated. And what this does is it'll, decre it'll decrease the damage I take once, and also reduce my stamina consumption. Ah, so here, now it's activated. And at level 3, which I have now, um, stamina and sharpness will not decay. So no matter how much I attack this Toadiversary, my sharpness will not go down. And my stamina will not go down. So this is actually pretty good in theory. Um, basically, if you are at level 3, in theory, you can replace all of the sharpness management skills. So you don't need Master's Touch, you don't need Protective Polish, you just have infinite stamina. The problem is that it takes a bit of a while to activate. So before then, you might run at Purple Sharpness. Uh, you can swap to replenish sharpness even at level 3 and also swapping reduces your either heal status elements or in some cases just reduces them so you can see I have bloodlust right now the purple marker on top of the screen if I swap bloodlust meter goes down so I do sort of heal status elements uh, it's not really too useful in that regard the main thing you want it for is the sharpness or the stamina so if you have a weapon that needs both stamina management and sharpness management something like dual blades for example this skill might be really really good, but in cases where you just need sharpness, usually it's much more efficient to just go Master's Touch or Protective Polish. So yeah, it's more of like a low level sort of one point wonder skill you use if you need both sharpness and stamina. If you do want one piece, the Tempest Takuma, the Amatsu legs are pretty good, pretty efficient, but for things like Longsword and Lance or Greatsword, you aren't really going to care about this skill too much. You're better off using Master's Touch. So yeah, um, there's that. The other skill they introduced is actually really, really good there, and that's Frenzy Bloodlust, which you get from the Risen Shigaru Megala. Um, so, what this skill does is uh, basically, when you recover from the Frenzy Virus, you get a free Wirebug, which is really, really cool. So, you sort of need the Bloodlust skill, but luckily, all of the Risen Shigaru Megala gear that has Frenzy Bloodlust also has Bloodlust. So, you can see this purple aura around me that's Bloodlust, and if you don't know, basically, once you deal enough damage, you cure yourself from the blood loss. You need to do 600 motion value points worth of damage. So that just takes you a whole bunch of attacks. Um, it's also, by sheer coincidence, precisely equal to four uh and Sakura Slashes. So if I do four of those, this is two, this is three. Uh, the fourth will give me a recovery. I am out of wire bugs. So I'm gonna keep attacking, and eventually I will get this. Yeah, I'll have recovered. Frenzy Bloodlust is activated, and I get another Wirebug. So each Wirebug lasts... Uh, so the extra Wirebug lasts an increasing amount of time depending on your level. At level 1 it lasts 30 seconds, which is pretty nice. Basically that's enough to get one or two Wirebug attacks out of it. Um, so really it's best to think of it as a sort of like free Wirebug. One downside of it is if you ever sheath, the Wirebug disappears really, really quickly. But that's mostly fine. So, um, other notes about the extra wire bug. One, you can get four concurrent wire bugs. So, if you pick up an extra wire bug from another source, Frenzy Bloodlust will give you a fourth wire bug, which is really, really cool. Um, the duration of that fourth wire bug is not increased by Wire Bug Whisperer 1 or by Wire Bug Wrangler, which is a weapon wrap up skill you can get. It's a one slot weapon decoration. Um, it doesn't increase at all, so it's 30, 60, or 90 or lower if you sheath. Um, but because you get, do get an extra Wirebug, it means it's really synergetic with Wirebug Whisperer 3 and Wind Mantle, which both decrease 
um, the cooldowns of your wire bobs, so it lets you do more and more attacks. So yeah, basically it's a really nice sort of like one point wonder skill, uh, both offensively and defensively. Um, offensively, it's basically a free wire bug attack you can use, and if you have wind mantle or just a really low cooldown skill, you can use it twice. So two free wire bug attacks, two free Sakura slashes are going to go really, really far for your damage. Um, and even though it disappears quickly when you sheath, you can still sort of use it as this sort of get out of jail free card. So if I have my extra wire bug active and I got knocked out, I can just you do the wire fall to get out of safety. It's much quicker than just getting up normally. So it's yeah, free get out of jail free card or free damage card. It's good for both situations. So yeah, um, it does mean bloodlust for what it's worth, but often you do it does come with it, and bloodlust is actually a really really good skill. Um, speaking of bloodlust, I'm going to get into that quickly. Basically, if you don't know about it, bloodlust um, grants this sort of frenzy virus, this purple R around me, and enough high damaging attacks will let me recover from it. So while I'm in under frenzy, I get a whole bunch of different um, effects. You can see that on screen now. Basically, more damage, more element, more status. Um, I decrease the cost of stamina when I roll, um, and I also have longer iframes when I roll. On the flip side, though, my health is slowly draining. You can see at the top of the screen, I'm slowly losing health. However, when I recover from it, when I do enough damage, I get bonus affinity, and I heal off all of that red damage. So again, that's four Silk Mine Sacra Slashes, or 600 damage. So the Dungeon Motion does twice worth of damage. One cool thing about this is that when you do three, uh, sorry, when you do 450 motion value points worth of damage, the aura turns from purple to light blue. You can see on screen, um, I have a I just susceptible to the uh, frenzy. Let me just try that again. But you can see the gauge on top is purple right now. When you do 450 points worth of damage, it turns light blue. So once it becomes light blue, you know you're almost going to be cured. For the long story, that's actually pretty cool, because as we said, Silic Bind Sakura Splash is exactly 150. That means whenever it's light blue, you know that one Silic Bind Sakura Splash will be enough to cure the Frenzy, which you can be ready to do another one. So what I mean by that is right now it's light blue. Once you do one Silic Bind Sakura Splash, I will recover from the Frenzy. I'll get the third wire bug, which means I can use it immediately again. So I can maneuver myself after that fourth one for a fifth one, knowing I'll have the new wire bug available, even if it's not listed. So yeah, I think that's a cool, fun, long start trick. It's probably relevant for other weapons as well if you know how much motion value each skill does. But yeah. So for what it's worth calculating bloodlust, I talked about it in previous videos, it's slightly complicated. But overall, Bloodlust is actually a pretty solid skill, and now it's pretty accessible thanks to the new Shagaru Megala gear. Also, Curious Crafting, also, you can use it via Force Ball Decoration. In general, it's better if you need it to like. In general, it's better than things like Critical Eye if you do need that extra stamina. So, yeah, Bloodlust is good, and then you can chill a few points of Critical Eye while you're at it. One other thing it does is it lets you use Coalescence. Uh, Coalescence is also like a nice one point wonder. At level 1, it gives you 12 points of damage for 30 seconds whenever you recover from a status element. Here, you'll be constantly recovering from Bloodlust, and especially now we're fighting afflicted monsters, you'll be recovering from Bloodlust and getting a lot of extra damage that way, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, uh, basically, overall, in these new top 8 5 skills, Frenzy Bloodlust is actually really, really good. A uh, great one point wonder. Use offensively and defensively, combines with Bloodlust, another great one point wonder to get you huge affinity and damage, and also combines with Coalescence, a great one point wonder to give you huge amounts of raw and element and status. Heaven Sent is a bit more difficult to practically use, but it can be convenient if you do need to manage both sharpness and stamina at the same time. So, yeah. Now, in the title of the four skills, we got some really cool stuff. Um, so, one skill that I think got a bit of hype was the Frostcraft skill, which you got from Delcana. And this skill is pretty interesting and pretty complicated. I have it equipped right now. You can see it by the light blue bar on the screen next to the aura bar. So not the intricate hardcore bar, the one that's below my stamina bar. What this does is um, it slowly dispels as you attack, it gets shorter, and when I sheath, it charges up. Depending on how much it's charged up, I do increase the amounts of damage. 
Uh, so it basically rewards you for sheathing with more damage, which is really, really nice. Higher levels increase the length of the bar, which lets you use it more and also increases the max amount of damage that you deal. So on screen right now, you can basically see what each skill does, and it's pretty interesting. So with Frostcraft 0, you have, you have nothing. Uh, with Frostcraft 1, you get this one segment of gauge. And with the red dotted line, I've basically separated how much damage extra you how much damage you do, depending on how filled the bar is. And as you can see at level one, when the bar is a hundred percent full, your one attack does five percent extra damage. Every other attack, if the gauge is only partially filled, you do normal damage. You get nothing special. So every time you sheath for about a second, your one first attack will do five percent extra damage. That is really, really small and quite irrelevant. You're not going to be sheathing, hopefully, that much. Um, and doing just one extra attack, having 5% extra damage, there's way better skills. So, yeah. Um, on the flip side, it does come on some pretty good pieces of armor, so you might actually get it for free, but it's not really anything that's going to make a huge increase in your damage. It's more like a nice extra skill. On the other hand, um, Frostgraph 2 is when it starts getting really big, good. As you can see, once you get Frostcraft 2, your first hit will do 1.2 times damage. And 1.2 is actually like pretty significant, 20% more damage, which is huge. So if you do a sheet attack that does a lot of damage, this can actually be really, really good. So really only on the great sword if you do a lot of sheet attacks. If you do that, you get 20% damage on your first hit, which is nice. However, every other hit does either 5% extra damage or no extra damage. So only really on the great sword, nothing else. It's when you get Frostcraft 3 that it actually starts getting good for other weapons. So as you can see, when you get Frostcraft 3, you get two extra segments. If, at, if there's anything in that fourth segment, you do 1.3 times damage, 30% more, which is massive. And then you get a few hits of 20% extra damage, and then 5% and 1%. 5% and then no extra damage. So the 5% doesn't really matter. But having a few hits of 30% and a few hits of 20% are really, really good. For the longsword, that means that if you do the Sacred Sheath combo, you'll get 20% or 30% in all of your hits, which is great. And if you do the EI Spirit Slash or you draw into your Soaring Kick, you're going to do some solid extra damage. So yeah, it's pretty good for the longsword in terms of damage. The problem is it is a bit expensive. Basically, you either need all three points for it to be useful, or it's useless. So if you have space to fit in all three, it's good, but oftentimes we might not have the space to actually use all three. So it's a bit situational. If you can fit it, it's good, but you can't always fit it, and it's either all or nothing. Three points or zero points. This isn't looking good. So yeah, uh, the other skill they introduced in this patch was the Dragon Conversion skill, which you get from Risen Crimson Glow of Alstrax. So this skill is pretty interesting. Uh, basically what it does is it grants extra effects that change element depending on your current scroll. So when you're on red, um, your element of resistance changes to zero, even if it's a negative, it changes to zero. And whatever elemental resistance you lose converts into elemental damage. So basically it boosts elemental damage depending on your elemental resistance. Uh, the conversion rate is relatively low. Um, so you can see on screen that conversion rate. So 15% if you're a raw at level one and two, and 4% if you are a ranged weapon. So 15% for melee, 4% for ranged. At level three, it increases to 25% and 8%, which is better, but still not great. Um, I'll get back to that in a second. In terms of blue scroll, you just get extra elemental resistance. So you get some just for being on blue scroll, and you get others after doing a few extra hits. Uh, what's interesting is that the tooltip says you only get um, the extra resistance if you're level 2 or higher, but you do actually get it level 1, which is nice, I guess. So level 1, you do get like that extra elemental resistance, and you can swap to red to get the extra elemental damage. Now, the problem with this is that um, basically it's really hard to get elemental resistance really, really high, so that 15% or 25% isn't going to be making a huge difference in most cases. So really, it's just a way to get free elemental resistance. From blue, basically, that's what it does. And from red, if you're negative, it'll bring it to zero, which is nice. But yeah, because elemental resistance doesn't normally go that high, the extra elemental damage isn't usually going to be useful. 
except in one situation, because there's one skill that massively increases your elemental resistance, and that is Dragonheart, which you get from the normal Crimson Glow Valtrex. So this skill was in the base game, and in the base game it was really, really good. Basically, it does a whole bunch of different effects. So at low HP, you get Dragonflight, which is bad. What Dragonflight does is it makes your elemental and status damage zero, unless you're doing dragon elemental damage. So it reduces your damage, basically. However, Dragonheart also grants increased elemental resistance, depending on the level, and it, increase, it increases your raw damage at really, really high levels. Uh, you can see on screen all the actual effects. So at level 4 and level 5 it gets 5% and 10% extra damage, which is fairly significant. Um, and that's part of what made it so, so good in the base game. 5%, 10% damage is really good. Um, also, one point of Dragonheart was really, really nice defensively. Uh, getting 30 extra elemental resistance, even at level 1, is nice to turn like 2-hit KOs into 3-hit KOs. And also, if you don't know, when your elemental resistance goes above 20, you're immune to all blights. Basically, this meant if you took a hit that took you below 50%, you'd automatically be immune to every single blight in the game. Also, we could activate the skill Coalescence, uh, which gives you extra damage um, when you heal up and recover from Dragon Blight. So, and at higher levels, you got an extra massive 5% 10% damage. And now, combined with Dragon Conversion, you can turn that 30 or 50 elemental resistance damage into massive Dragon elemental damage with that skill. Which is pretty good. The problem is that Dragonheart in this game is much less good than it was at base. Basically because it's really, really hard to stay on low health. Um, for two reasons. One, followers, if you use them, are constantly going to heal you, or allies are constantly going to heal you, and followers and allies, if you're just playing the game casually, are going to decrease your hunt time significantly. Uh, secondly, a lot of the harder monsters are going to be um, the afflicted monsters, which grant you blood blight, which automatically heals you when you attack. So yeah, you're going to constantly be healing just for attacking the monster, so you'll heal out of dragon blight, so yeah, you aren't going to be taking advantage of that extra damage or extra resistance. As such, it's very difficult to use offensively outside of Coalescence, uh, but it can still be used defensively. So basically, yeah, it's a pretty solid defensive skill or utility skill with Coalescence, but it's not such a big damage dealer as it was in uh, base game. So yeah, by that extension, Dragon Conversion also isn't that great either, so yeah. Now, those are the newer skills they released, but now, because they continually expand the pool, the pool of curious crafting available skills, we now have a few of the older skills more and more accessible. So I wanted to go through a few of the highlights, a lot of the bigger, really, really good ones we want to talk about, and I want to start off with, I think, the biggest, and in my opinion, the best skill that you can get by curious crafting, which is Powder Mantle. Uh, I think a lot of people know that this skill is good, but I don't think people actually appreciate just how good this skill is. This skill is actually insane, and like to my calculations, this is like the biggest uh, point for point damage skill you can actually ever get. More than because you export a critical boost, it's absolutely massive. So you have to get at least one point of the skill. So if you don't know what Power Mantle does yet, once you deal enough hits to the enemy, you get this red aura around you. So for me right now it'll take 26 hits, so that's 12 hits, 13 hits, and then one more circle slash for the hits, one more circle slash and one extra hit, so we this red aura. And what this red aura does is when I get knocked back, I'll do damage to the enemy around me equal to 0 0.3 times my raw. So my raw right now is 531, so I'll do 0 0.3 times that, and after 20 seconds it'll turn a blue, and it'll explode when I attack an enemy instead of being attacked. So it's blue right now, and when it's blue, when I attack, I do 1.25 times my roll. So I'll do, let's see how much damage I do, 670 damage, which is massive. In real situations, the damage will actually be even higher, because I'll have things like Chain Crit activated, or other buffs from my Coalescence or whatever else I have. So it's really easily able to hit 800 damage or so. And you can do this less in less than a minute, 800 free damage in less than a minute is absolutely massive. You can trigger this very many times during a hunt. 
and overall it ends up being around 10% of your overall damage. So about a 10% bonus damage boost for a one skill. Um, the effectiveness does depend on how reliably you can hit the blue aura and how quickly you can get it. Um, how quickly you can actually activate the auras, but even if you fail a significant amount of time, you will still do an absolutely massive damage boost. Um, I might do a dedicated Paradimantle video after I talk about this and all the different builds. Basically though, I created a quick calculator that shows how much damage you do. Uh, you can see that like on screen right now. Uh, basically, if you fiddle with how much damage you do per hit, the explosion damage, how many hits you do while you wait for an aura, and how likely you are to reach blue, um, you can calculate different damages. So if I always hit blue, and I do about 120 damage per hit, and explosion does about 750 damage, I do 17.4% extra damage at level one. If I fail half the time, I still do 11.7% extra damage, which is absolutely massive. Powder Mantle 2 and 3 are less significant, so only about a 2.8 or 3.8% extra damage for later points. But even then, 2.8% damage for one skill is still really, really good. So, yeah, basically Powder Mantle 1 is easily one of the best skills in the game. Um, and Powder Mantle 2 and 3 are also still pretty significant as well. It can always fit both 2 and 3, but, like, they're still really, really good. Basically, yeah. You can fit it, fit Power Metal 2 and 3, and definitely, definitely hit powder, fit Power Metal 1. It's going to be a massive boost to your overall damage. So, yes, um, the next skill we're going to talk about is going to be Wind Mantle, which is also released in this same patch. And you get that from Risen Kushal de Aura. And this skill is also insanely, insanely good, uh, depending on your weapon. What this does is it boosts the Wire Bug recovery rate after you use Wirebug attacks without chiefing. Um, so the amount it recovers depends on both the skill level, so one, two, and three higher levels if decrease it more, and also how many attacks you do. It, the amount of attacks you need to hit the maximum level depends on the specific weapon you're using. For the long sword, you need 20 hits, and after 20 hits with Wind Wampo 4, you get a 40% cooldown reduction for Wirebug wire attacks, and that's massive, and that stacks with Wirebug Whisperer. With both, you basically cut down your recovery time in half. You can use your Wirebug attacks twice as often, which for a weapon like the Longsword, where so much of your damage is hidden behind your Wirebug attacks, you are massively increasing your damage just with this skill. With this and Frenzy Bloodlust, you can just continually spam things like Reciprocal Sakura Slash and Soaring Kick. So yeah, it's really, really good. For the Longsword, definitely recommend this, and I'd recommend this for every weapon that actually really, really uses its Wirebug attacks. But it's worth you do have an indicator if you don't know about it, so you can see that my gauge is green. With the Longsword, you can also uh, quickly sheath, either via Sacred Sheath or via the Manual Sheath. Um, what I mean by that is if you fail your Special Sheath counter, and immediately sheath, and go into the Drum Double Slash, you can use a Drum Double Slash, without eliminating your green gauge. So Wind Mantle is still active, even though I did manually sheath very quickly. So yeah, that's another fun, quick longsword attack. So another skill that's also really good is Build Up Boost, which you get from Risen Camellios. Basically what this skill does, it gives you 10, 15, or 20% extra damage uh, when your weapon inflicts status damage. So normally that happens one third of the time. So basically it's a 3.3%, 5%, or 6.6% damage boost depending on the level. So at level 1, that 3.3% damage boost is really quite good. So if you're using a status weapon, this is a quite massive damage bonus. 3.3% damage for one skill is really good. Levels 2 and 3 are pretty good, but less good. So it's going to be like a 1.6% damage boost over the previous level, um, which is nice, but often there are better options. Like we said, Powder Mantle is like a 2 or 3% damage boost, so Build Up Boost is relatively less good. and in most real builds, you could fit like a two attack boost instead of one build up boost, which is probably going to be a bit better. So, yeah, build up boost level one, must use, two and three, maybe not. Uh, last skill we're going to talk about is Mail of Hellfire, which you get from Scorned Magnamalo. Um, this skill is also now accessible via Curious Crafting. It's pretty nice. 
So when you're on the red scroll, which I am now, I get 15, 25, or 35 extra raw, but I lose 50, 75, or 100 defense. If I'm on blue, um, I gain 5%, 10%, 20% element damage, but I lose 10, 25, or 50 resistance. Um, red is a nice one point wonder. So 15 damage is massive, and you aren't really going to notice your 50 defense loss. So basically, in reality, that's like a 3% or so bonus damage, which is, again, really, really nice. But the later still is only about 2%. Uh, more than build-up boost, less than powder mantle, and you lose defense. So again, I'd only use it for one skill. Higher levels of blue mail of Hellfire, on the other hand, are really, really good for elements. So level 1, 5% is not really too much, but 20%, now that's a lot. The problem is that losing 50 element resistance is really, really noticeable. Um, that's a lot of element resistance you're losing. You're going to be one shot a whole lot more. That's much more significant than the loss in defense. So yeah, I wouldn't really recommend using blue mail of Hellfire at higher levels. I'd just use red at level 1. So yeah, those are basically all of the skills that I want to talk about. Um, overall, in summary, the sort of like rule of thumb. Um, rule 1, make sure you get power to battle 1. That's going to be a massive 10% damage boost. You just need that for all of your damage. Then, if you have a skill that needs um, Wind Mantle or Frenzy Bloodlust, so if you use a lot of Silkbind attacks, make sure you get both of those. You'll have much higher uptime in Silkbind skills and thus much higher damage. Um, also, if you use a status weapon, like a poison weapon, get one point of build up boost, 3% extra damage. Really, really nice. After that, it's a bit more questionable. Um, if you're spending a lot of time on Red Scroll and using a lot of Raw, use one point of Mail of Hellfire for 3% extra damage. Uh, if you sheath a lot and can fit three different skills, get Frostcraft 3. If you can't, don't. And then in order, these ones don't matter a bit less, so if you can use it, get Powder Mantle, Mail of Hellfire, then Build Up Boost in that priority order. So Powder Mantle 2 and 3, highest priority, Mail of Hellfire 2 and 3, and then Build Up Boost 2 and 3. You won't be able to fit all of them, but just go down by that order. Those ones at 6 don't really matter, um, you can fit in uh, quality of life skills or other offensive skills instead, and you aren't going to have a significant loss in damage. So, yeah, that's that. Um, hope you all enjoyed that video. So, hopefully, tomorrow and the day after, I'll release two separate builds on Longsword uh, one on Raw, one on Element. Uh, if you want a quick teaser, I guess you can quickly see my build right now. So, this is going to be the main Raw build I'm going to recommend. Uh, this is slightly better than like the build I'll recommend, but it's very, very good, so I can fit in all of those great skills I spoke about. How do I see this? There we are. Um, yep, yeah, so you fit in like all of the necessary offensive skills and a lot of the special units I talked about. Uh, but yeah, so I'll have this video out now. One build on video on raw, one video on element, and I might do a quick video on powder mantle math, which I think is going to be really, really fun. Um, so yeah. Um, for those who stuck around, thank you all again so much for uh, watching. I'm sorry that I have disappeared a bit. Life just got a bit hectic. Everything's fine, it's just life gets in the way. Um, and yeah, hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.